Right, here we go, solving these uh, review questions for your test on quadratic equations and quadratic functions. Uh, number one, you've been given uh, four different graphs. Clearly, uh, two of them are parabolas and two of them are lines. Uh, we need to match the diagrams with these equations at the bottom. And so, uh, it tells us right at the very beginning that a and b are positive integers. So uh, let's look at this very first equation. This is clearly in the form of a linear equation. Remember that a, which represents the slope here, the coefficient of x, right? mx plus b, so a is your slope. a is a positive number, which must mean that we have a positive slope. And so which line has got a positive slope? It's clearly uh, graph number 2. And so our answer here is graph number uh, the next one, we again have a linear equation, but this time we've got the negative of a positive slope A, which must mean, of course, it's a negative slope. We can see that that is the line in graph 4. Now we get to the tougher ones. The two quadratics, oops, we've got x squared plus ax plus b, and x squared minus ax minus b. Now, in fact, there's two different clues here. I think the easiest clue for us to look at would be the value of the y-intercept. Because b must be a positive number, when I'm adding b, that means that my y-intercept must be positive. And so which of these two parabolas has got a positive y-intercept? So let's see, our y-axis is occurring right here. Here's our y-intercept, which is above my x-axis. So this one clearly has got the positive uh, y-intercept. And so the answer must be graph number 3. And that must leave graph number 1, which has got a negative y-intercept, as we can see right here. There's our y-axis. Here's our x-axis. And we are clearly in the negative region. Uh, right, let's move on to uh, number two. So we've got the graph of a quadratic function there. We need to write down the equation of the axis of symmetry. Well, there's a couple of ways we could do this. Uh, I, I don't know whether I would really trust your eyes. I mean, clearly the axis of symmetry looks like it comes down right there in the middle, because it appears that that is the, uh, the minimum. So uh, that would be the axis of symmetry's equation would be x is equal to 3. But we can confirm this uh, a little bit better by looking at our two x-intercepts, which occur at negative 2 and at positive 8. And if we like, take the uh, midpoint, or the average, of those two amounts, then I think maybe that's an easier way, or uh, not necessarily an easier way, but uh, a more scientifically uh, accurate way of ensuring that it is exactly x equals 3. We're not depending upon the graph uh, being given to scale. We've actually shown it as the midpoint of the two x-intercepts. Now we need to write down the coordinates of the minimum point. Coordinates must appear in a set of parentheses like this. And because our axis of symmetry is x equals 3, that must mean that our x-coordinate the vertex is 3. And the corresponding y-coordinate well, I don't know actually what the equation of the function is. That hasn't been given. So I think the only thing I can do here is just read it off the value. And it looks like the y value right here is at negative 14. And part C, we need to write down the range of the function. Range means all of the y values. And so if you imagined what are all the possible y values on this parabola, the lowest that we ever get, the smallest y value we ever get, is negative 14. So we must be, in this case, dealing with all values that are greater than or equal to negative 14. Another way you can think about this is because we're dealing with the range, let's smush the graph onto the y-axis. And these points would smush over to here. And if I look at all of these points that I've covered on the y-axis, I've clearly covered everything greater to or equal greater than or equal to uh, negative 14. Uh, question number three. So we've got a picture. We've been told that it's a square. 
with a side length of 5 centimeters. So if it's a square, it must be 5 by 5. It's surrounded by a wooden frame whose width is x. So not only is the width here x, that must mean that the width here is x, the width here is x, and so on. All right, we need to write an expression in part a for the length l in terms of x. So if you look at the length l here, how can we describe l in terms of x? Well, this length L is clearly equal to this x value plus this value of 5 plus this x value. In other words, the two widths of the frame plus the width of the picture in between. And now we've expressed the length in terms of x. Now we need to write an expression for the area of the wooden frame. Now notice that the we're only dealing with the area of the wooden frame. So only this shaded region is the only area that I'm looking for, only the frame. And so we've got the entire big square, and we know that that's going to be 2x plus 5, because that's the length, times itself in order to get the area of the entire square. But then because we're only looking for the area of the frame, we're going to need to subtract the area of the picture inside, which is 5 squared. And I suppose that we could uh, simplify this if we wanted. And so uh, be careful here, right? This means that we're doing 2x plus 5 times itself. And then we're subtracting the 5 squared, which is 25. And so if I FOIL, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. I've got 5 times 2x, that's 10x. Another 5 times 2x, that's a total of 20x. And then I'm adding 25, but I'm then subtracting 25, and they cancel out. And so we're left then with area is 4x squared plus 20x. Part C says if the area of the frame is 24, so the area is 24, find the value of x. All right, I'm going to put everything onto one side of the equation here. That's going to be most easily done by moving the 24 over to the right side where it becomes a minus 24. And uh, now because I've got a 0, probably the quickest way to do this problem would be to go into polysimilt. So I'll say apps and go into P, polysimilt. And this is going to be poly root finder. And we'll set, this is going to be a second degree equation because it's a quadratic. So let's put in our three coefficients of 4, 20, and negative 24. And then we'll hit solve. And it gives us our two values are x equals negative 6 and x equals positive 1. But let's just think for a second that x represents the width of the frame. So how can a length or a width of a frame be a negative value? So we've got to throw out this negative 6 because it doesn't make sense in the context of the problem. And we discover then that the width of the frame, x, is equal to 1. Moving on to number 4. The x-coordinate of the minimum point is x equals 1.25. Now then, let's remember that a minimum point is located, just like a maximum, the vertex, is located right on the axis of symmetry. So then we know that x equals 1.25 must be the axis of symmetry. So we need to find the value of k. Well, the axis of symmetry we know is negative b, so our b value is a k, so negative k over 2a. And since x, our axis of symmetry, is equal to 1.25, now we can solve for k. So we'll multiply both sides of the equation by 4, and we'll find that negative k is equal to 1.25 times 4, that's 5, and therefore k is equal to negative 5. Now we can calculate the y-coordinate of the minimum point. And so if we plug our 1.25, the x-coordinate of the vertex, we plug it into the original function, and our k-value plus k, so that's going to be uh, minus 5x, right? Plus negative 5, so minus 5 times 1.25 plus 4. I'm going to do this on the calculator. So let's, uh, let's quit. 
and we'll say uh, one point. Oops, sorry, two times one point two five squared. Oops. Oh, I've made a mess out of this. Let's clear and start again. All right. Oh, clear, clear, clear. Go away. All right, here we go. Two times 1.25 squared. There it is. Minus 5 times 1.25. And lastly, we'll add 4. And we'll get the y-coordinate of 0 0.875. And another way you could have done this problem is to go into y equals, and we enter our function, 2x squared minus 5x plus 4. We can graph it, and then we can use the minimum feature, second trace, calculate, go into option 3, minimum. The left bound, so the cursor is already on the left, that's great, that will be my left bound, I'll move the cursor to the right and then hit enter as my right bound and then lastly I'll move the cursor real close to that point as my guess and hit enter and let's interpret this carefully 1.2499982 that's just 1.25 it's a rounding error on the calculator and we can see that the corresponding y value which they're asking for in this question is just the y coordinate is going to be 0.875 and lastly, it wants us to sketch the graph for the domain going from negative 1 to positive 3. So uh, one nice thing about having entered it into the calculator is that instead of saying graph, we can say second graph to have a look at the table. And we need to start when x is equal to negative 1. I can see that my corresponding y value is 11. So let's plot 1, 11. I'm sorry, negative 1, 11. It's approximately there. And then I've got 0 and 4. And then I've got 1, 1. Um, let's see, I've got to divide this into 3. There we go. So 1, uh, 1. And then I've got uh, 2, comma 2. I've got 3, comma 7. And in fact, I also have one more point, right? You remember that I figured out that my, uh, my vertex, let's just write it a little bit better here, my vertex occurred with coordinates 1.25, and the corresponding y-coordinate was uh, sorry, 0 0.875. And so I could even graph that point, too. So 1 and a quarter and 0 0.875, and that's going to be the minimum right about there. And so now we can draw a parabola that goes through all of these points, just like that. All right, let's go on to question number five. We've got a rectangle with dimensions five plus two x and seven minus two x. Look, as soon as I see a problem like this, my thought is I want to draw a diagram. So let's draw a diagram of the rectangle. And we've got uh, dimensions five plus two x and seven minus two x. All right, I need to show that the area can be written like this. Now show that, show that. You've got to understand the code says that uh, we cannot use the answer that's being given. They're only giving us the answer in case we're unable to, uh, to solve this question. They've given us the answer so we can still proceed and do questions B, C, and so on. But uh, we're not allowed to use this answer as we show that the area. Well, we know the area is equal to length times width. And so our length is, say, 5 plus 2x, and our width is 7 minus 2x. And so if we do a little foil here, 5 times 7 is 35. Now our outer ones give me negative 10x. Our inner ones give me positive 14x. And then 2x times negative 2x is negative 4x squared. And a little bit of simplification, we'll find that the area is 35 plus 4x minus 4x squared, exactly as required. Part B. They've given us the table of values. We need to calculate the values of P, Q, R, and S. Well, I suppose one way you could do this is by repeatedly substituting these X values into your area function and then writing down what your results are. But I have a better way. 
why don't we enter this function into y equals? And so I've got the function 35 plus 4x minus 4x squared. I know it's not written in the regular standard order, but uh, it doesn't matter in this situation. And instead of graphing it, I'm going to look at the table of values. So I'll say second graph in order to access the table. And I can see that I want my first value that I don't know yet to be uh, at negative 2. So we can see, yes, negative 3 is negative 13. Negative 2, we can see, occurs at 11. So p must be equal to 11. And then negative 1 is at 27. Good. 0 is at 35. Good. 1 matches to 35 again. And so q must be equal to 35. 2, we can see, corresponds with 27. So r must be equal to 27. And let's scroll down to see what we get when we see 4. Uh, so 3 maps to 11 as we were given, and 4 maps to negative 13. And so s is equal to negative 13. Now you might actually even notice the symmetry here. We've got 35, 35 in the middle, then 27, 27, 11, 11, negative 13, negative 13, that's the symmetry of a quadratic function. Now here it says to uh, use graph paper to plot the points from the table. Uh, well, I don't know how quickly or easily I'm going to be able to, uh, to get some graph paper up here, so um, you have to excuse me for not using actual IB, line, uh, IB graph paper here. But, uh, yeah, shoot, I really, uh, really should. Um, tell you what, I'm going to pause this video for now, and uh, in part two of this video, I'll make sure I've got some graph paper up, uh, ready to show you how to, uh, how to plot the points from the table using the given scales of one centimeter for one unit on the x-axis and one centimeter for five units on the vertical axis, your area axis. Alright, I'll be back in a minute.